Hey everybody, I'm Alex Debris. Welcome to the DynamoDB workshop where we learn how to use the DynamoDB API, some of the key operations you'll be using in your application. Uh, not a whole lot of data modeling stuff here, so go check out some of my other videos or content for that, but uh, really just about using that DynamoDB API. So this is part three of the workshop. We're gonna talk about secondary indexes in this one. Uh, I just wanna quickly review what we're gonna cover here. First of all, we'll, we'll learn about secondary indexes, what they are, why they're important, how you use them, and then we'll create a table with a secondary index and see the mechanics around that. Uh, second, we'll load some data into our table so we have some data to play with. And then third, we'll actually use that secondary index, use the query operation to read items with additional access patterns than our primary key on our DynamoDB table. And then finally, at the end, we'll just clean up and, and delete our DynamoDB table. So again, this is part of a DynamoDB workshop. It has three parts. So make sure you go check out the other parts as well. In part one, we covered basic operations. So creating a table, inserting an item, reading that item back, using condition expressions when you're writing items, things like that. The second one was all about um, using a composite primary key, which gives you more power, more flexibility in your table. And then especially using that query operation to, to really harness some of that, that power. Uh, with that composite primary key. And then finally, this is the third one. It's all about handling additional access patterns using secondary indexes. If you want to get the code, you want to do the walkthrough, all that stuff, this is available on GitHub. So go check that out. GitHub.com slash Alex Debris slash Dynamo DB Workshop. Uh, the link's in the comments down below, so you can go check it out there. And with that, let's get started. And we'll begin by talking about secondary indexes, what they are, how they work, and, and why you really want to use them. Uh, and let's, let's start with an example. You know, in the last lesson in this workshop, we had a table that included uh, movie roles. So actors and different roles they've played in different movies over their career. You can see an example of that table here. Uh, notice that we have our primary key set up where we have the partition key of actor and the sort key of movie. Uh, that made it very easy to query by actor. So I could easily go to this table and say, hey, give me all the movies by Tom Hanks and query those pretty efficiently. But what if I have additional access patterns, right? What if I want to query by the role or what if I want to query by the genre and maybe the genre and the year or something like that, uh, more, uh, just different access patterns than what I have set up with my primary key. That's where secondary indexes come in. So with a secondary index, what it does basically is it enables additional access patterns on your table, right? If you have your, your primary access patterns with your primary key, that can satisfy some of them, but then you want to query in a different way, secondary indexes will, will allow you to do that. And basically what you're doing there is you're declaring an additional primary key for your secondary index. So you have this primary key uh, for your, your main table, but you also have uh, sort of an additional one in your secondary index. Now, there are a couple of differences between your table's primary key and the secondary index's primary key. The first one is that secondary index attributes are not required on your items. If you recall what we talked about with your primary key, uh, you declare that primary key on your table and every item that you write into your table needs to have the attributes for that primary key. That's not gonna be the case for your secondary index. You don't have to have uh, secondary index attributes for all your items. If you have an item that doesn't have one or both of the attributes for your secondary index, it just simply won't be copied into that secondary index for you. A second thing that's different is there's no uniqueness requirement on those primary key attributes. So again, with your, your main table, with the primary key, each item needs to be uniquely identified by that primary key. So you won't have two items with the same primary key values. That's not gonna be the case in your secondary index. You can have multiple items that have the same values uh, for that secondary index's primary key. Um, another thing that's interesting is you can, you can do reads only against your secondary indexes. You can't write directly to your secondary indexes. What's going to happen is you're going to write to your main table and that's actually going to get asynchronously replicated out to that secondary index for you to perform reads on, but not writes on. So you need to sort of structure your table accordingly that you can, you can handle those writes on your main table as you like, uh, but then handle the reads on your secondary index. So let's move into the task here. What we're going to do here, what I want you to do is create a dynamo DB table with a table name of movie roles, a composite primary key with the hash key of actor and the range key of movie, provision throughput with read capacity units and write capacity units of five. So these are all the same as lesson two that we already did here. Here's the big difference. I want you to also have a global secondary index named genre year index that has a hash key of genre and a range key of year. So that's the big change here. You're adding that global secondary index when you create your table. Go ahead and look at the documentation, how to do that. Take some time, pause this. We'll come back and see how to do it. All right, welcome back. Hope you were able to figure out how to add that secondary index to your table. Just in case you weren't, we're gonna walk through it here. So go to the repo that you should have and you can go to the source directory in the third lesson here. And there's a t file called createtable.js. Go ahead, pop that one open. And you can see here, it looks similar to what we've done before. We're importing the AWS SDK and creating a DynamoDB client. 
and then calling create table on that client. A lot of this is similar to the create table we did in the last lesson, so I'm not gonna cover all that. What I do wanna cover and go down to is this global secondary indexes section down here. And that's where we're gonna configure our global secondary indexes. You can see that this is a list because you can have up to 20 global secondary indexes on your tables. So you can have multiple if you want. Uh, we'll give it an index name of genre year index, just like we did with our table, give it a table name. We declare the key schema, again, just like we did with our table, right? So we're just declaring the key schema just like it's a primary key on our main table, but it's actually a secondary index. So here we have genre, we have year for the hash and range key. We're also creating provision throughput and specifying the projection type. So in this case, projection all just means all the attributes on our items will be projected into that index. You can limit it and just do something like the primary key values or, or select attributes. I almost always do all here. The last thing I wanna call out here is we have these attributes in our key schema. Um, if, if the attributes you're using in your secondary index key schema are different than the ones in your primary key, you're gonna also need to add those to your attribute definitions up here. So before we had actor and movie attributes, here we also have genre and year attributes. You can see I declared genre as a string, year as a number. So that's what I have there. That should be pretty straightforward in declaring that secondary index. Let's go ahead and run that script so we get our table created. And you can see my table was created successfully. So now I have this table created, not only with that primary key, but also with this secondary index that's gonna allow additional access patterns. So next we're gonna see how to insert some data into it and then more interestingly, how to query that data out using that secondary index. All right, so first we gotta load some items into our table and this is gonna be similar to what we did in the last lesson, just loading some data in. So I'm gonna hop right into the task. And what I want you to do here is insert four movie role records into your DynamoDB table using batch right item. Again, this is the exact same as what we did in the last uh, lesson. The secondary index didn't change anything here. So go ahead and do that, take a few seconds, pause it, come back and see how it's done. All right, welcome back. Hope you were able to insert those items into your table. Uh, let's just run through how we do that real quick. I'm gonna look in the source directory here. There's an insert items.js file. We'll pop that one open. Again, it's the exact same as what we did in the last lesson. So we're creating our DynamoDB client. We're loading that data from that items.json file, uh, creating the put request items for our batch write item request, and then running that um, through the batch write item API. So let's just run that here. Should be pretty quick. Uh, and you can see that the movie role items were created successfully. All right, so now let's read those items back using that secondary index. Let's take a quick look at our table again, just to reorient where we are. Remember, we had this movie roles table where the primary key has a partition key of actor, a sort key of movie, but now we've added this secondary index, right? Where the partition key is genre, right? And the sort key is year. We're gonna sort of reorganize that data. Let's see what happens in our secondary index. Here is what it's gonna look like. Again, this is the exact same data. It's just sort of flipped and reorganized into this new primary key for us there. You can see that primary key on the left outlined in red. The partition key here now is genre and the sort key is year, meaning it's, it's very efficient for us to query by a particular genre, even filter down to specific years if we want to. Uh, and that's what we're gonna be doing in our task here. So the task is to use that query operation again. I want you to read all the movie roles for a particular genre using the query operation on your secondary index. So reach out, use, use drama or something like that. Uh, find the, the drama movie roles and, and take a few seconds and we'll come back and see how it's done. All right, welcome back. Hope you figured out that query operation on your secondary index. Also gave you another chance to work with key condition expressions and, and using expressions, expression attribute names and values, things like that. So let's take a look at how I did it. Go check out the source directory. I have this query roles.js file, so we'll open that one. Again, got the usual client creation stuff at the top, and then we're using that client to run the query operation. We're specifying our table name. The big change here is that we're also adding an index name property. So this is an optional property on query. You know, you can query the main, the main table, the main primary key if you want to, but you can also query that secondary index. Here we're querying that genre year index, and we have our condition expression here. Uh, we're saying, hey, the genre is equal to this given genre. We're using both expression attribute names and expression attribute values here. I wanna use that, that drama category to find all movie roles in that, that genre. So let's execute this code and see what we get back here. We get, we run that query roles thing. We found two roles, right? We found um, Tom Hanks in Castaway, and we also found Natalie Portman in The Black Swan. So you can see how that 
that secondary index, that query operation really enables these extra access patterns for you, right? It's not just querying by actor now, now we're querying by genre or any different thing we want. So, and, and the nice thing about that is DynamoDB is maintaining all those duplicates, all those copies of data for you. So you don't have to write it multiple times. You just need to write it once. It's gonna get replicated out to that secondary index where you can run this query operation against it. All right, we're almost done with this lesson in the workshop. Last thing we wanna do is clean up here, make sure we delete our DynamoDB table once we're done with it. So your task here, very simple, we've done this in the other two as well, is just delete that movie rules table that you've created. So take a few seconds, come back and, and see how it's done. All right, welcome back. Hope you were able to delete your table successfully. Just in case you had any issues, let's run through that real quick. So in that source directory, go to the delete table.js file, pop that open. Again, we have our client created and then on that client, we're calling this delete table operation. The only thing we need to pass in there is our table names. So we're saying, hey, delete that movie roles table. So if I run this in my terminal here, I can delete this table and voila, voila, my table was deleted successfully. All right, that concludes the third and final lesson in this DynamoDB workshop where we learned about handling additional access patterns using secondary indexes. Secondary indexes are a very powerful tool in DynamoDB and you're really gonna use them a lot if you have complex applications. So I hope this was useful for you. If you like this video and the other ones, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll get updates when other ones come out. If you wanna know more about DynamoDB data modeling, make sure you check out my book, The DynamoDB Book. It's the most comprehensive guide to data modeling with DynamoDB that's out there. Other than that, see you next time.